Hello everyone, welcome to FLX, our farming life experience. My name is Dale and I am your teen host here at Bahamas Harvest Church. It's going to be a very busy weekend. It's Valentine's Day weekend and it's the NBA All-Stars. I've been sharing my notes of encouragement all week. Then there's the celebrity game, the rookie game, the three-point shootout, and the Duncan contest. Whee! But this morning is all about your family getting to experience an hour of fun together, all while learning about Jesus. Today on FLX, we have age-appropriate lessons for students from toddlers to high school. So enjoy the day's lessons. You're here because I have an awesome true story from the Bible to share with you. It's about Jesus helping someone. One day, Jesus walked into a town and a centurion came up to him. A centurion is a fancy word for someone who was a leader of a lot of soldiers. 
centurions were very powerful people and important. But this centurion had heard about Jesus and all the amazing things he had done. Even though the centurion was an important person, he knew that Jesus was even more important and he needed Jesus' help. The centurion said, my servant is at home and he is very, very sick. Please, I need your help to make him better. The centurion really needed help and he believed that Jesus had the power to help him. Raise your hand if you think Jesus has the power to help the centurion. I do too. You can put your hands down now. Jesus asked the centurion, do you want me to come to your house and make him better? The centurion said, I know you are so powerful that you can just say that my servant will be better and that he will get better. Jesus told the centurion to go home and that his servant would be all better. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. Jesus loved the centurion and wanted to help him and his servant. Jesus loves you and wants to help you too. That's right. Jesus loves you and he wants to be your friend forever. Tell me, who loves you? That's right, Jesus loves me. Let's stand up straight at attention and say it like a big, strong soldier. Are you ready? Who loves you? Jesus loves me. That's the truth, friends. Let's have a seat and talk to God together. Are you ready? Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. He helped the centurion soldier and he will help us too, because he loves us. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for listening, guys. You are such great listeners. Bye. Hi, guys. I hope you enjoyed our story today. How deep and wide and strong is the love of Jesus? That's our memory verse, and that's what we will be learning today. So let's say it together. Get up, get up. Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? All right. How wide, how long, how high, and how deep is the love of Christ? Ephesians 3, dot, dot, 18. Let's say it again. How wide, how long, how high, and how deep is the love of Christ? Ephesians 3, dot, dot, 18. I am so glad that Jesus wants to be our friend forever. His love will never end. He is my forever friend, and I know that he is yours too. There is no better friend than Jesus. Who loves you? Jesus loves me. Great job, guys. See you next time. Bye. Hello, Road Warriors. It's been a great month so far, as we've discovered how we can ride with respect. Respect is showing others they are important by what you say and do. God made us to show respect to others. Each person is made in the image of God, which means each person is so very special and valuable. When we treat others with respect, we show them how much they matter to us and to God. Since we're talking about the rules of the road this month, I mentioned that we would be playing games in person that demonstrate your respect to each other. We will get to that in a moment, for my online viewers, let's check out what's happening today in Story Lab. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about respect while we take a look at the story of two sisters and how they spent time with others. Come on, Amara. Hey, 
Hey, I'm Zeke. And I'm Amaya, and we're talking about respect, which is showing others they're important by what you say and do. You're important to me. I'm glad to hear But it. see, that's not enough, is it? Saying it isn't enough. I have to do something to show you're important. Okay, you could start by showing me what you planned for today. You're gonna love it. What is it? Three guesses. I need one clue. It's cold. <gasps> We're going skiing? Do you even know how to ski? Uh, the only time I tried, I sprained my ankle. Well, we're not going skiing. Um, I need another clue. <gasps> we're eating ice cream! You like ice cream, right? I love ice cream. Enough to ski on it? Hmm. Nah, I'd rather eat it. Great, I've got everything ready. This is awesome. Where's the ice cream? I haven't made it yet. Haven't made it? Doesn't that take like super long to make? You're totally worth it. Okay then, I think we better get started. Let's, Let's make, make it. it. All you need is heavy whipping cream, vanilla, and sugar. Step one, pour all of the ingredients into the small bag. One cup of heavy whipping cream, One and a half teaspoons of vanilla. One tablespoon of sugar. That is not enough. I don't think so. <laughs> and now, seal the bag. Okay, but what's the salt for? I don't want salty ice cream. Okay, this is the really cool part. I mean, actually cool. So you know how you see trucks putting salt on icy roads? Yeah, I guess I thought it melts the ice or something. Nope. Salt actually lowers the melting point of ice, which takes us to step two. Step two, fill the large bag halfway with ice, then add a quarter cup of salt. Step three, place a small bag inside of the large bag. And pour more ice on top. And now we seal the large bag. Okay, but I still don't get how the salt works. Adding salt to ice when making ice cream quickly lowers the temperature of the ice, which is needed to make the ice cream solid. Without salt, the outer ice doesn't get cold enough to freeze the ice cream, and it will stay liquid. So, salt makes the ice colder while it melts. Yep, and that means the ice cream freezes faster, which makes for smaller ice crystals and fluffier ice cream. Now, we get to step five. Shake it up. As long as it takes. But I thought the salt was supposed to make it go faster. But not that fast. Okay. Want some help? No, I'm doing this for you. Okay. Could we maybe like edit this into a cool montage? I better keep shaking it then. Alright. While you do that, it's time for the story before the story. Today we're in Luke, the third book in the New Testament. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. 
But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So, at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem. God's very own son, Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing, which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, everyone. You can call me Brian. Hey, Brian. One day, as Jesus was walking with his disciples, he arrived in the town of Bethany, where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Martha and her sister Mary and brother Lazarus were close friends and followers of Jesus. They knew what an honor it was for him to visit their home. Jesus, you sit right here. I know you must be starving after such a long day. Dinner will be ready soon, but here are some raisins and figs, and Mary just brought cool water from the well. Let me know if you need anything at all. It was common for men to sit at the feet of Jewish rabbis and learn from them, so Lazarus and the other men crowded around to hear Jesus speak, while Martha and Mary worked to prepare a meal for Jesus. Martha must have put every ounce of energy into cooking the best food possible. But after a while, Mary left the kitchen to come and sit down at Jesus' feet just like the men. Now as the afternoon wore on, Martha kicked into high gear. Boy, she chopped, she roasted, she basted, she baked, she cleaned, and she decorated flying from one task to the next. And as the temperature in the kitchen whew, grew warmer, so did Martha's temper. I mean, Mary was over there with Jesus doing nothing while Martha was left to handle the entire meal on her own. Martha probably felt overwhelmed and annoyed. And at last, she couldn't keep quiet anymore. Does she think dinner is just going to magically appear on the table? Lord! Everything got quiet. Everyone stared at Martha. My sister left me to do the work by myself. Don't you care? Tell her to help me. Everyone waited to see what would happen. Would Jesus be angry with Martha for interrupting? Or would he tell Mary to give up her spot at his feet and go to the kitchen? Instead, Jesus looked at Martha with deep compassion in his eyes. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed. Really, only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Jesus wasn't angry with Martha for working hard to make a meal for him. It was important work that had to be done. But Martha had gotten distracted from the most important way of showing love to Jesus, through her time and attention. So what did Martha do? Well, we don't actually know how Martha responded. Maybe she did sit down for a while to listen to Jesus. But we do know that later, Martha showed great faith that Jesus could heal her brother. And she was one of the first to declare that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. Well, that's good to know. I mean, I feel like Martha a lot of times with school and homework and chores, it's really hard not to worry about things not getting done if I take a break. Well, you're not alone. We can all lose track of what's really important. So, what's, what's our part, part in the story? Well, Martha was doing lots of good stuff for Jesus, but she missed spending time with him. So, the best way to show love for Jesus is by spending time with him first. Yeah, and there are lots of ways to do that. You can spend time with Jesus by reading scripture and talking with him about what you read. Yeah, you can pray and talk with Jesus about anything that's on your heart. You can even spend time with him by listening to worship music. Or find a quiet place and ask Jesus to be there with you. Where we spend our time shows what matters most to us. Spending time with Jesus is the most important thing. And spending time is a great way to show others that they matter too. Yeah, like when you get home from school, maybe take a couple of minutes to talk to your mom and dad about your day instead of going right into doing your homework. Or when your little sister asks you to do sidewalk chalk, you can put down your game and hang out with her. Maybe your parents want you to go visit your grandma at the retirement home. You might be tempted to grumble, but remember that when you take time to listen to her stories, you show how important she really is. That's a lot to think about. It sure is. See you next time. So here's the thing. 
take time to show others that they are important. Speaking of which, where's my ice cream? I finished it up and put it in the freezer. Do I get to eat it? Yeah, let's go. Mmm. This is actually not salty. <laughs> Do you feel important? Absolutely. Then my work here is done. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next, next time. time. Oh, so good. <laughs> We've made it through a lot of God's big stories so far, all the way from the very beginning. And as you heard earlier today, we're looking at what happened one day when Jesus was traveling with his disciples and he arrived in the town of Bethany. What were the names of Jesus' friends that lived in Bethany? Very good, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. They were siblings and they were very close followers of Jesus. Now, Martha welcomed Jesus into their home. It was an honor that Jesus had come to visit. And while Jesus spoke, Martha's sister, Mary, sat down to listen. But that's not what Martha did, was it? What did she do instead? Let's see what it says in Luke chapter 10. Martha was busy with all the things that had to be done. Now, we don't know exactly what Martha had to do. I mean, maybe she had to, let's see, mm, uh, set out the figs, check, uh, roast the lamb, check, bake the bread, check, uh, set out the bowls, check, um, clean the house for the visitors, check. Matt, you know, all of that just sounds exhausting. How did Martha feel when she saw that she was doing all these things and Mary wasn't helping? She was sitting by Jesus. Yeah, she was annoyed because she felt that she had to do all of the important chores while Mary got to just sit and spend time with Jesus. At last, Martha couldn't keep quiet anymore. So what did she do? Yeah, she went to Jesus and she was like, Lord, my sister has left me to do the work all by myself. Don't you care? Tell her to help me. What do you think happened next? Do you think Jesus was angry with Martha for interrupting? Or do you think he told Mary to go and help Martha with the, all the chores around the house? Hmm, guess what? Jesus didn't do either of those things. Instead, he said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. You know, you got all these things on your checklist, but few things are needed. Really, only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it's not going to be taken away from her. Jesus didn't say that Martha was wrong because she had to do these important chores, but, and that shouldn't be an excuse for you with your parents either. But think about what Mary did. She chose to give her time and attention to Jesus while he was there with her. And you and I aren't that different from Martha. We have some important tasks that we have to do too. But are some things that you have each day really that important? What are some things that you have to do? Yeah, 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 okay, go to school, do your homework, brush your teeth, yes, please do that, and your chores. And maybe once you finish all those things, you know that you'll get to spend some time doing things you really enjoy, like playing video games or watching TV or just reading for fun. And those are good checklists to have to do every day, but what are some things that might be missing from that list? How about spending time with your family? Or eat together around the table and talk about how everyone's day went? Or maybe take some time to play with your little brother or sister? Or what about other people in your life? Maybe you can go visit a grandparent who's feeling sick or an elderly neighbor. Maybe you should spend some time with your friends and really ask what's going on in their lives. You could take time to listen and let them talk. It's important to spend time with God too. And this could mean reading his Bible and taking time to talk to God and pray. Think back to Martha. Jesus knew that Martha had important work that had to be done, but Martha had gotten distracted from the most important way of showing love to Jesus. And that was through her time and attention. As we think about the way we spend our time each day, let's make sure that we take the time for other people. Let's take time for our relationship with God. And let's not be so busy doing things that we forget to show others that they're important. And that brings me to our bottom line. The one thing that you need to remember today, take time to show others they are important. So let's pray. Dear God, we know that it's important for us to spend time with you and take time to show others that they matter to us. 
We know that those are the most important ways we can spend our time, but sometimes we can feel like Martha did. There are a lot of things that take up our time and attention, and many of them are things that we simply have to do. So people give us wisdom, so please give us wisdom in how to know how to handle our hours that you have given to us. Help us to take the time to show others that they are important and that you are important. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. It's important to point out that Martha was doing good work, important work. She was doing work for Jesus. But Martha was so focused on the work that she was doing for Jesus that she missed out on spending time with him. Let's remember the story and think of how we can take time for others. Let's not just spend the entire day getting things done that have to be done. Take time to show others they are important. Say that with me. Take time to show others they are important. That can mean we spend time with God by praying, reading the Bible, or listening to worship music. It could mean that we take time to really listen to people around us and show how much we care. I bet you can come up with some great ideas of how we can take time to show others that they are important. Go home and practice some of them and let me know how it went when I see you all next week. Bye. Hello Crossover and welcome to our third week in our series, This Is Our Sex Talk. Now when it comes to topics like sex, there are probably things that we'd prefer to keep to ourselves. Today's bottom line, confession is good and confession is powerful. Let's turn into our communicator and panelists who will show us how to begin the process of defining the criteria they have for someone that is safe to confess to. What's up, family? I'm Caleb. And when I was in high school, guys, I loved inviting my people to everything. Yo, like the sporting events, the, even the cross country meets. I know I, I had a stint where I did that for, I don't even know why. The cross country meets, the soccer games, the school plays, the family dinners, the sleepovers. Yo, I wanted my people with me all the time, except for one area, which surprisingly enough was church. I, I loved all of these things and I loved having my people at all of these things except for this one. And, and when I look back on it, I think it was because I loved church so much and I had these thoughts and opinions and feelings towards it. And I thought that if my friends who, who were cool with the soccer games and I knew they were cool with the family hangs and the sleepovers, maybe if they saw that and they weren't cool with it, maybe if they saw church and weren't cool with it, it wouldn't have been cool with me. See, we all have things where we love the idea of having other people right there with us. And we all have things that we'd simply rather deal with alone. We have things that we feel comfortable talking about. And we have things that we definitely keep to ourselves. There's a difference between the two, and that's what we're talking about today. Now, when it comes to topics like sex, there are probably things that we'd prefer to keep to ourselves. It may be tough for us to open up about some areas of it to even our closest friends. We may think things like, this is too awkward or embarrassing or just unexpected. We have reasons why we don't feel like we can talk about it. Maybe you feel like you can't be your full self in the different areas in your life, so now different people know different versions of you. Why is that? Well, sometimes we don't feel like we have a safe place to talk about it fully. If this is a somewhat embarrassing or awkward conversation, we definitely want to be sure that we're in a safe environment. It needs to be a no judgment zone where we can trust the other people and what they'll do with the information we share. The last thing we want to experience is someone misusing something we felt safe to share. But even when it's a safe place, it's still difficult to know how to bring things up. How do we initiate the conversation? What do we say when we don't feel like we have a safe place to talk about it fully? Or maybe we don't feel like we have a safe person to talk about sex with fully. 
This is similar to having a safe space. We need a confidential, no judgment person. But even at that, who would it be? Someone older, a friend, a counselor? How do we know what to say and what to keep to ourselves? For some of us, there may be thoughts or feelings that we're unsure of or confused about. We wonder, is it okay that I thought that? Or is it bad? The last thing we want is to bring up something and feel like we've done something wrong. Or maybe we've had thoughts or feelings or even done things that seem totally different than the person other people see us as. So whoever we talk to, we know that we may catch them off guard. Or finally, we don't feel like we have the courage to talk about it. We all have secret, hidden thoughts or actions we may feel unsure or uneasy about. We all have thoughts, actions, feelings, relationships, and behaviors that we keep to ourselves. Maybe it's a situation that no one knows about. Every once in a while, we all have things that make us wonder, what am I supposed to do with that? So what we typically do instead is ignore it. We just act like it's not there. We stuff it down further and further inside and just kind of hope that it'll go away. Or we distract ourselves with something else to make the thoughts and feelings go away. Or we compartmentalize it. We put it in a box and close the lid until it's time to open it again. We have a home compartment, a school compartment, and a church compartment. <laughs> we only use the compartments we need when we need them. So. What happens on the weekend doesn't affect who we are at church. We keep it all separate and it never crosses over. I grew up as a preacher's kid, so I definitely had an image to maintain at church, home, and even school to a certain degree. And I assumed that some of my thoughts, feelings, and actions when it came to sexual things would have been shocking to people if I opened up about them. So while I really needed to process what was going on in my mind, my heart, and my life, I just didn't. I was afraid to open up because I wasn't sure there was a safe space and person I could trust. I was also more concerned with maintaining my image and not shocking people than I was about getting into a healthier place. In fact, it wasn't until years later when I graduated high school that I discovered a better way. What was that better way? Well. Let's talk about it. In the New Testament, which is the second big chunk of the Bible, there are a bunch of letters written by a leader named Paul. Paul was one of the greatest missionaries the world has ever seen. He started a bunch of churches, and he would later write letters to those churches to encourage them. And what's cool about these letters is that they really help us, thousands of years later, understand what it means to live out our faith in Jesus. In one of those letters, Paul says this, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. I want to point out three things about that passage. The first is when Paul says burdens, he's talking about struggles and temptations. And this includes sexual temptations. Paul understood that his audience had thoughts and feelings that they dealt with when it came to this topic. And Paul also knew that to keep these struggles and temptations to ourselves makes life harder for us than it needs to be. We carry the extra weight of secrets and shame when we don't let someone know us fully. And Paul is telling us, as followers of Jesus, that we should count on one another to help carry the weight of struggles. It's better for us that way. The second thing Paul says, he says, fulfill the law of Christ. And when he says that, he's talking about love. Jesus' greatest command or law was to love God, love each other, and love life. So Paul is saying that one of the ways we can love is by helping carry each other's burdens or struggles. When we do this, we're doing the thing Jesus said mattered the most. We're loving each other and loving our own lives, sharing the stuff that is weighing us down. And finally, Paul wrote this to a church. And that makes it helpful to us as a church today. Church should be a group of real people which can talk about real ups and downs, the good and the bad, and the wins and struggles of life. Church should be a safe place to talk about anything, including sex. Later in the New Testament, another writer named John said this, This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. 
And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. John is telling us that as followers of Jesus, we are called to trust that God is good and live like this is true. We're invited to live in the way God says is best to treat ourselves and others as we would like to be treated. This includes fellowship with others, authentic community with other Jesus followers. John saying that part of following Jesus is living in close relationship with each other. It looks like spending quality time with other people who are following Jesus. It means having meals together and just enjoying each other's company. It means having real and good conversations with each other in a way that goes beyond how are you doing? Fine. It's all good stuff. But then he says that if we claim to be without sin, we're lying to ourselves. We all have dark stuff in our lives. The things that we don't want to talk about or aren't sure how to bring up. All of us. If we say that we don't, we're not living in truth. And then John says this. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. After John talked about the light, he talked about bringing things into the light. He used the word confess, which basically means to admit. John invites us to live authentically so that we aren't carrying the weight of those things we've kept in the dark. And this seems odd because it kind of feels like it would be safer to keep some things in the dark. But have you ever been in a strange place and felt a little nervous because it was dark? Have you ever been in a familiar place and felt nervous? If you walked in the bathroom at somebody else's house at night and it was completely dark, wouldn't you feel better once you turned on the light? Yes, you'd feel safer. Turning on the light makes things better. John is telling us to turn on the light when it comes to things inside our heart. There are things that live in the shadows. We keep them in secret because we aren't sure how to talk about them or we feel shame. John is telling us that talking about those things is good and powerful. This means that we can confess to God and someone else about the decisions we've made where we may have stepped outside of alignment with sexual integrity. We can share with someone safe about something that's been done to us that wasn't our fault. We can process it and bring it to the light. And we can open up to God and someone else about some of our thoughts, feelings, and questions. Remember this, family. Confession is good and confession is powerful. A couple years ago, I remember I got into it with my buddy Evan, right? I, I honestly don't even remember what it was, but I knew that we were fighting, right? He had said some things about me to other friends, and then those friends had circled back around and told me about it. So I started saying things to them about him, and then they circled back around to him. And it, it was just this vicious cycle, right? Where, where we outward, outside looking in, sorry, we knew that we were friends. People knew we were friends, but between us, Things were not going well. And there was one night where I pulled him to the side. It was after church and I was just tired of the fighting. And I was like, how, how do we fix this? How do we fix this so that our friendship can be what it was again, right? And it started with me saying, I'm sorry, Evan, dude, I, I, again, I don't even remember what I said, but I was like, Evan, I've been saying these things to these friends and I know you know about it and I shouldn't have said it, but I need you to hear it from me that I shouldn't have said those things and I'm sorry. And guys, that. That was all it took. The remainder of our time together that we spent talking that night and even the rest of our friendship was amazing. We opened up, we talked, we laughed together, we bonded, we were friends again, but it started with my confession and oof, it was a beautiful thing. This is the power of confession. It draws us closer to God and each other. In light of what we talked about today, there's one thing you can do to turn on the lights in your life. Confess, open up, admit, talk about it. First, to God. Spend some honest time with God. Tell God what you've been doing, thinking, feeling, hiding, all of it. Share everything you can think of, good or bad. Ask God to reveal things going on in your heart and life that you may not even know about. As these things come to mind, confess them. Put them in God's loving hands. So confess to God and confess to someone safe. Yo, the church 
is meant to be a place where we walk with one another through anything. Our small group is meant to be the safest place in the world for you to talk about anything. But I also know that it's not always as simple as that. There's some things that you may not feel comfortable sharing with the entire group, or they would be simply too painful or would take too long to tell in the group. In that case, find a trusted older person that you'd feel safe talking to and set up a time to have a conversation soon. Think of someone who accepts you, loves you, and respects you someone who won't judge you and is a good listener or advice giver. Really, anyone who has those traits plus any other that make them a safe person to you. Or you can even ask your small group leader if they're down for a one-on-one -on -one conversation after group. God's love for us never changes, no matter what we do. It's unfailing. Confession isn't intended to increase guilt. It's about us bringing things to the light for the sake of healing and relief. The result isn't judgment, it's freedom. Your confidence in God's love should be more secure as a result of confession. Confession is good and confession is powerful. We all have a tendency to hide or pretend like everything is perfect when it's not, especially when it comes to the topic of sex. Instead, we can come to God and someone else just as we are. We may discover that in our brokenness and honesty, we can develop even more intimacy with God and trust in His love. Think about it for a second. What if the church was full of people who helped you carry your burdens? What if it was full of people who were for you and had your back? What if it was full of people who were willing to walk with you and help you get through the difficult things you face? That sounds good, doesn't it? Why don't we all work together on becoming that type of place for each other? I think if we did, it would be a lot easier to feel safe to talk about some of the things that are often difficult to talk about. All right, welcome Crossover. We are in week three of this topic called This Is Our Sex Talk. And we hope you guys have been joining us. We've been having some good conversations about this. We know that sex is good and sex is powerful. And we know that technology is good and technology is powerful. And to this week's bottom line says confession is good and confession is powerful. We want you to know that only the devil likes the darkness. Mm. You know, yeah. he wants you to stay in the darkness, but God is light and he wants you to stay in the light. And that's why I love the verse that says, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another, you know? And, and, and that's the thing, you know, God wants us to stay in the light. And that's, that's something I encourage, en encourage you guys to do. So let me ask you this question, Dinaj. Who in your life do you find easy to talk to about anything? Mm. I think my mother. Okay. You know, she knows cool. she's there for me yeah. for, for the start. Yeah, know? yeah. And she knows the most about me. And it's really easy to talk to someone who knows you. Yes. You know, and he knows. Yeah, that, that's cool. What, what makes it so easy to talk to? Because it's someone that on your, like you know will mm -hmm. always be on your side mm -hmm. having that person you could truly trust and yeah. know wouldn't sell that information for I got a biscuit you, you know what I mean you could, you could talk to them about things like when we talking about like sex you could talk to them about sex and things oh like my. that oh my okay <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's too fine that's there's a limit to this thing <laughs> <laughs> that, that's really cool but if if you if you could if you could choose somebody in your life mm -hmm. like who who would that person be to talk about that intimate thing like that like the struggle so the other hmm. the things about sex. But to be honest, Andre, I think that's something I need to work on. Finding yeah. someone to, to, to confide, to confide in. Her. Yeah, and, that, and that's good and that's honest and I like that because there are many teenagers out there who are like that. You know, sometimes we don't know who to talk to. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a good thing because when, you, when you're in that place, now it's a place to realize that and then now it's a place like how you say, you know what, I need to do something about that. Mm -hmm. Because we were never designed to live this life alone, right? God created us with, with people, a family, a community, to really build up and sharpen each other, you know, and that's important. And that's something I encourage you guys to do too. You know, if, especially when we're talking about this thing called sex, like, like I love what the communicator talk about, you know, things happen to people, man, you know? Sometimes it's, it's our fault and sometimes it's not our fault. And if it isn't our fault, we definitely need to talk to somebody about it, you know? And if it is our fault, we definitely need to, to talk to somebody about it. Why? Because guilt could eat you up. Yeah. Yeah, especially when it comes to this thing called sex. If we do sex the wrong way, you know how guilt, guilt is crazy, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And when guilt comes in, 
then then the shame and after shame then we start to do bad things to ourselves or we start to go deeper into it and like you said guilt consumes mm-hmm. us mm-hmm. you know it, it, it kind of like separates us from the actual truth because mm-hmm. you feel like you're not worthy you try to do this so. right right and, and, and i feel like in some cases it can even make you worse because right. if you're like oh i'm very unworthy so mm-hmm. it wouldn't matter if i do this yes and exactly then this, and then this it, exactly it consume you just doesn't mean just doesn't mean take over and stay right you take over and keep eating at eating you that, consume right. is slow yes yeah, so good so good and so true you know and but when we and that's why i love when the bible talks about confession right because mm-hmm. when we confess our sins one to another mm-hmm. right there's something that happens there's a freedom that happens as a result the con the consuming thing is is it is it is, is, is short-circuited mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and and that, that's something god designed within us you know that that once we confess it if we confess our sins, the Bible says he is faithful and just to forgive us. Mm-hmm. I mean, the first thing I will encourage you guys to do, of course, just just like the video communicator said, is to go to God and confess all of your sins to God. I mean, the one thing I remember about 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 the word and everything is that God wants us to confess everything. He knows what we're struggling with. He knows the, the deep, dark things that we do when nobody looking. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He knows it. He sees it all. Right. He sees everything. So you might as well just say, "My Lord, hey, <laughs> forgive me for get this." It off your chest, <laughs> you know, yeah. get it off your chest with yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Because because that's the first thing, right? And then when you do that, just asking for guidance on who you could talk to in, in person. Mm-hmm. You know, because we do need that human contact also. Yeah. You know, and and that's so important. You know. And it's important also find a like-minded person yes. who's also spiritually yes. in tune. Yes. With the word as well as most Your definitely friend, most you know? definitely most, and that that is the most important thing you have to find the the person who is in, I like how you say in tune with the word somebody who's spiritually mature because only only that when you walk with wise men you grow wise mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and that is so important that that we do you know i this reminds me of what um david even talking about confession david says something in psalms he says and he's talking about god right and he's talking to god he says truly you desire truth in the inmost parts you know, God wants us to give us the truth, man. Mm-hmm. Tell us the real deal. You know, tell us what we, you, if, even if you're mad at him for uh, for allowing something to happen in your life, or you think he allowed it to happen in your life, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, just take take it to him. He could take it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He could yeah. take it. You know, and 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 that's something that I really encourage you guys to do. You know, so so I know I like we didn't even get to some of these questions, right? <laughs> but but I I think that. That, that was really spirit led and I think that, that something like that needs to be said, you know? Yeah, I agree. So so with that that's just bow our heads and prayer. Almighty Father, I just pray for each and every person out there who is, you know, needing somebody to talk to. I pray that you guide them to the right person. I pray Lord that you just help them to confess all of their sins to you. Um, because Lord we you know, we everybody is imperfect and, and we all have sinned and fall short of your glory. So I just pray that you just forgive us, that you just cleanse us that you just lead us and help the guilt and the shame not to consume us for it's for freedom that you have set us free and i give you praise for each and every person out there and i thank you for the work that you're doing in their life in jesus name i pray amen Amen. all right crossover we hope you guys really really um got something from this message and if you guys are struggling out there i mean feel free just to email us i mean you could email and talk to and ask to talk to any one of the leaders um, um, out, out in crossover or whatever the case is, pa- or even, even one of the pastors, if you want to talk to Pastor Mario or pa- one of the elders or whatever, just reach out to somebody, you know, send in the email and we are willing to help you. We, you know, we don't want you to suffer alone. Okay. So we love you and we hope to see you guys next week as we finish off this beautiful topic. Love you guys. Uh, NBA finals, Valentine's Day. Boy. What an awesome FLX today. Today, I learned from Harvest Adventures in Candy Heart that Jesus loves me and wants to help me so I can always go to Jesus when I need help. In Kids Electric, with road rules, take time to show that you are important. The time we spend with others can speak volumes to show them how much we love them. And in Crossover, this series, Our Sex Talk. Confession is good and confession is powerful to find the criteria to determine a safe person to confess to. Hey guys, it was a pleasure to hang out with you today. For more information on what's happening for students and family life, including our crossover Fridays for students in grades 6 to 12, or to watch 
any previous teachings, check out our website at www.bahamasharvestchurch.org and like us on Facebook. So please continue to keep safe and thanks again for tuning in today. I hope you all have a splendid and a great Sunday. See you next week on Afrolax, our family life experience. See you next week.